this morning as we begin to worship the King of Kings. I want to give you a little bit of encouragement this morning from Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Begin to raise your hands with me and cry out to him. Abba, Father, we worship you this morning. Lord, we know that you are here. You are moving in our midst. Lord, as we cry out to you, would you just meet us where we're at? God, if we feel like we are too broken this morning, that you would pick up all of our pieces and put them back together. Lord, you're a healer. You're a provider. The needs don't even need to be spoken because you see our hearts. You know what troubles us, Lord. You're going to meet us where we're at. So we worship you for the breakthrough that is coming. It is your name we pray. Amen.
something out of Isaiah chapter 53. In just a moment, we're going to pass out the emblems to each and every one so that at this moment, we can experience and participate in something that Jesus instructed, commanded, and gave to each and every one of his followers. Isaiah 53 just close your eyes, listen to these words. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are all healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This next verse leads into the beatitude that we'll be looking at today. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. This moment has been instructed for us as his family. For us to stop and wait and just remember, pause for just a moment and remember the great sacrifice of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He loved us so much that he gave his life as a ransom for each and every one. As the ushers come through to pass out the emblems, let me also caution that this is for the children of God, those that have made decisions to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. If so, join with us, whether you're a member of O'Fallon Assembly or not. If not, I ask that you just would make Jesus Christ today your Savior, your Lord, and your Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood, O oh Lord. The precious blood. The cleansing blood. That washes us clean. Until everyone has received both the cup, the emblems. If you haven't received, just put your hand up so we can make sure it gets to you. Thank you, Lord. Take the top layer off to reveal. Just the token, it's a symbol of his broken body. And what we do is we just break it in two. So if you would do that, just break that in two, close your eyes and just acknowledge that he gave his life freely. He gave his life for you because he wanted to provide something better. He wanted to free you from all shackles and chains. He wanted, to, he wanted to take upon himself the sins of humanity, take it to the cross, and then he gave his all for each and every one of us. Just lift up your hands, and I want you just to simply say, Jesus, I thank you, and Jesus, I surrender to your will for my life. Would you do that? Lift up your hand and just thank him for his body. Thank him that he was the supreme, perfect example and sacrifice. Nobody but Jesus Christ could have stepped in for you and me. And so, Lord, in this moment of worship, Father, I just pray for a renewal of our hearts, a renewal 
of the refreshing of our devotion and dedication, Lord, to honor you and make you known. We stand here today as blood-bought, cleansed, forgiven people of God. It's because, it's because of what you did, what you thought of, as you cleared the path for us to know God the Father through your life. We receive it today with joy, and we receive it today with great, sincere responsibility. Amen. Eat all of it today. Thank you, Jesus. Then the next flap, if you would, just pull that up gently. We can end here today. It's a special joy to have kids that see mom and dad lead them, and teach them, show them if they've made Jesus Christ the Lord of their life, they too can share they too can celebrate new life take that up Jesus thank you for the blood thank you for the shed blood that trickled down the cross of Calvary but it has not lost its power it has not lost its significance it's the same powerful blood that redeems and that delivers and that sets men and women free. Father, I thank you for, Lord, this liberating power and this liberating force. It's the life's blood that, Lord, keeps us strong. It keeps us protected. It keeps us whole. Pray that, Lord, if there is somebody today that needs healing in their body, Father, I pray that you would grant to them your divine touch. For by your stripes, we are healed. So, God, we commit to knowing you we commit to making you known as brothers and sisters in this wonderful family lord we honor you and we look to you we bless you and we worship you have your way in all of our lives today in jesus name and everyone said amen would you drink of the cup And if you would, just lift both hands now. Come on, just I surrender all. That's what Jesus wants to see. He wants to see open-heartedness, willingness from what He's done and now to just follow the Lord. Live for God. The world behind me and it's the cross before me. We're thinking, we're believing, we're, we're looking with joy. So God, have your way continue to worship you as we continue to honor you in Jesus name ushers are coming by to pick up the cup moms and dads let me say in this next song if you could allow your kids to go out that door Tammy if you would just kind of take the kids and lead them they're going to go back to their special service today let's continue to worship Jesus
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. It's good to be in God's house this morning. Man, oh man. I trust you all woke up in his arms this morning. I'm sure you did. I'm sure before your feet hit the floor, you were in prayer. I believe that. There's some prayer needs in the church. If you would, join your hearts. Close your eyes, bow your heads, join me. And as you're aware of some prayer needs in your own lives or your friends' lives that probably are not listed here, I ask that you would pray for them. Heavenly Father, we come before you today seeking your presence here in this church. I pray that you would open our ears, open our hearts, Father, to the pastor's word that he will share in a continued series, Father God. And we pray that that word, as it lands in our ears and our hearts, would become part of our daily lives, that we would apply it to our daily lives and not just let it lie on the floor here. Take it with us, Lord. Let us meditate on it. Father, we ask you would send your healing power to our dear brother and sister Chris and Braylon Vitella. Father God, as, as well as others in our congregation, Lord, who are in need of physical and emotional Spiritual hearing, fa healing, Father, you brought them both through a, a terrible incident, a terrible accident, Lord. Absolutely with, from my observation, minutes, seconds earlier or later could have been very different, but Lord, you had it under your control. And we know that that outcome and the result and their healing will result in testimonies, Lord, that others may need to hear. And that is something that we look forward to in your precious name. Father, we pray for Chicago Embassy Church, Pastor Chris Butler. We pray that your Holy Spirit is moving there as it is here in our own church. We pray for an outpouring, Lord, of your spirit there. It would touch hearts, minds, and souls, Lord, and bring people closer to you. We pray for missionary Linda Seiler, Lord. Chi Alpha Campus Ministries has a difficult job bringing the word to many who do not want to hear it, but she presses on with your strength, Father God, and with your word, and is able to fulfill the goals in which you have set for her. We praise your name for her ministry, Lord, and pray that you will continue to support her, continue to direct her, and continue to bless and oversee and protect and encourage her. We trust in your love and care, Lord, for all of us. We believe that by your stripes, we will be healed. We believe that your promises are true and will be fulfilled in your time. Thy will be done. We declare your healing power is at work here, restoring health, strength, and wholeness. Grant us your peace and comfort and blessings as we go forth in this day. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 You know what? As we're worshiping the Lord... That last song, there was something special upon that, that message, that truth. As, across, as I look across the congregation today, I see and know of just a host of needs. Some nobody else knows about. Some it's known and declared through a prayer list. Some unspoken, some declared, but... I just truly felt that as we were singing that name, some of you had to just show forth your courage in knowing that Jesus is the answer over whatever situation that you're facing. You might be in right in the middle of something that is just squeezing you and pushing you and trying you and you just need to speak the name of Jesus. The devil needs to see you stand in the house of God. For if we can't stand in the house of God and declare his name over whatever enemy, then my goodness, he's already defeated us. So as they begin to sing this again, I'm going to ask you to do something bold and daring. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, all I'm going to ask you to do is stand up, close your eyes, and just say, Jesus, over my situation and over my need. As they begin to sing... You do what God wants you to do today. Stand and declare his name because he is your answer. He is your hope. 
Rama bakando rata kasia. Rianda na barando roko tori etara bashanda. Sakanda na barianda na basha. Hallelujah. I can't hear you. You must speak his name. Yes. Keep saying Jesus. The devil hates it, but the Lord loves to hear the name above every other name. Jesus. Declare the name of Jesus. Come on, speak his name. His name is power. His name is life. His name is light in the darkness. His name is healing. His name is hope. His name is strength. His name, He's the answer for every problem, for every trial. Jesus, we worship you. And Jesus, we exalt you. Above all others, your name is to be to praise today. We draw near to you. We sit at your feet. Nothing is too hard. Nothing is too tough. When Jesus is right there with us so Lord your people have stood today and Lord they have testified that you are power your anointing you're the answer Lord to everything that Lord they're going through and they'll not bow they'll not give in they'll not buckle they'll not sway they'll stand firmly rooted and grounded in the foundation of your love be exalted in this place, we pray. In the name of Jesus, God's people said. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap. Come on, give Jesus the hand clap. Worship. You may be seated. There's a scripture, hallelujah, that we'll read for our giving today, the first Sunday of the month. It's the first day of the week. There's something beautiful about first but remember this whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously here's a key well, what have you decided all comes down to our decisions each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. Lord, teach us the beauty of cheerfulness, the beauty of, Lord, right decision-making, which simply says God ordered it, God commanded it. I want to be faithful to experience His overflow blessings. And so, Lord, as we worship You today, may we worship You with the tithe, with the offerings, meet every need of this, Lord, Your house of worship. 
And Lord, our partner missionaries, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hi, I'm Fallon Assembly, Assembly God. God. My, My name is Jennifer, Jennifer and these and are these our February, February announcements. announcements. Today, Today at 1130, 1130 our, our LA Kid leaders, leaders will be having, having a meeting with Pastor Ash. Ash. If you if are a leader, leader in our kids' ministry or have an interest in serving in our kids' ministry, ministry please, please make sure to stick around after service, service and head over to the meeting. meeting. Our, our OA students, students and OA, OA young adults, adults are going, going to win our jam today. today. Yay! We will be, we will be riding, riding together and leaving, leaving the church at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Make sure that you bring $15 from the entrance fee to the concert and any other additional funds that you would like to purchase for food and merchandise. Tonight, Tonight at 6, at 6 o'clock, o'clock is our is monthly, monthly prayer night. night. We, will we will be meeting in the prayer room. room. If, you if you are wanting, wanting to grow in your prayer life, life and, relationship and relationship with the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, this is, this is a, great a great service that you, that you don't, don't want to miss. miss. On, On Saturday, Saturday, February 11th at 2 o'clock, o'clock our Joy Ministry is hosting a bingo and dessert event for everyone ages 50 and up. If you would like to join, please sign up up at the Welcome Center. Center. Sunday, Sunday, February 12th, we are are hosting a guest guest room room experience experience right after after the 10 10 o'clock service. service. If If you are are new new to OAG OAG and have not not attended a guest room room before, this this is an opportunity opportunity for our staff staff and board members members to get to meet you and your family for a few moments in our higher ground coffee bar. Please reach out to a staff member if you have any questions. Easter, Easter Choir, Choir Practices, practices officially, officially begin, begin next, next Sunday, Sunday, February 12th, 12th at 4 o'clock, o'clock here in the sanctuary. sanctuary. These, These practices, practices will be every Sunday, Sunday at 4 o'clock until Easter. Until Easter. If, if you, you can't can attend, attend all the practices, but you, you are still, still looking for a way to have, have fun and, and use your voice to worship, worship the Lord, Lord please, please let Pastor Lexi know that you would like to participate. At 5 o'clock on Sunday, February 12th, Pastor Pastor Josh Josh and Melissa Melissa are hosting a Super Bowl party party for the the OAA OAA students. students. If you have have any any questions questions or would like to attend, attend, please please contact contact Pastor Pastor Josh Josh or Melissa. Melissa. On On Saturday, Saturday, February 19th, our OAA kids kids are are heading to to Falto, Illinois Illinois for a BGMC rally from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. If your your child child would like to to attend attend, or if you have have any any questions, questions, please please contact contact Pastor Pastor Ashley. Ashley. Our Our new new members class class begins begins on on Sunday, Sunday, February 19th at 9 o'clock. If you would like like to become become a member member of our our church, church, please please sign up for the class class on the clipboard at the welcome desk. We will also be sending around clipboards this morning during service for you to sign up. If you, if you have, have any, any questions, questions please, please reach out, out to a staff, staff member. member. Our, Our men's, men's and women's ministries are both hosting events on Saturday, February 25th. Our women's, women's ministry is hosting a Bible study and coffee event that, that morning at 9, 9 o'clock a.m. a.m. At 5.30 a.m., our men's ministry is hosting a food, fellowship, and godly finances event. Please reach out to our women's ministry leader, Teresa, and our men's ministry leader, Scott, if you have any questions. Our, Our annual, annual business, business meeting will be at, be at 1 o'clock, o'clock on Sunday, Sunday January 26th. 26. If you are a member of OAG, OAG and you would and love to join us for lunch after service, after service followed, followed by our annual business, business meeting, where we will recap 2022 and look, and look forward to 2023. 2023. Lastly, we, we have, have new, new coffee, coffee mugs, mugs for sale for $5, $5 each. each. You can you drink your coffee or tea and support our church. All while, All while using, using a brand, brand new 15 ounce campfire ceramic mug. Thank, Thank you for tuning in to our announcements, and I hope you have a great month of a month of February and a great morning. morning. Where's Jennifer at? Is she in here? Wow! I have to say, out of numerous videos that we've done throughout the years. There is so much going on in this month of February. That is so much. Um, That just goes to show that there is something literally for everyone. I know our student calendar is chock full between the event today and then the rest of the month. It just keeps going and going. 
For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Josh. I'm the student ministry pastor here. And what we're going to do is here for the next few minutes, we're going to go into a greeting time. For our students, um, we, we call it family time. And during this time, we have a question they go around asking. So if you are like some of my students and you don't know what to talk about, let me give you a topic. Pastor and I yesterday were talking about our sermon series that we're in. And some of us look at the word blessed and we think blessed because of Old Testament and that's what we always see. So if you want a talking point, do you say blessed or do you say blessed? Why don't you go ahead and stand and go ahead and greet somebody. about 15 seconds get your last words in find your seats get your Bibles out get into you version if you follow that for a couple of notes you get to add some things throughout this morning's message Praise God. Good to see all of you reaching out and connecting with the people around you. And look at Cody and Chad. They're on the other side of the church. They're just not staying over here. I think that is incredible. So, may the Lord bless you. And as you saw, all the activities that kind of spaced out for the month of February, a lot of things going on. If you don't receive a bulletin, we'd love to send that to you, so just contact the office if you're not on that scheduled list just yet. Two things I'll just highlight, as Jennifer did an incredible job, but uh, tonight, tonight's a time of prayer. Last month we had the first uh, week, the first emphasis of the week of prayer, and I just want to continue um, the flow and dedication and heartbeat of just people praying. So we're going to be praying in a more intimate setting in the prayer room. 
as uh, that Friday, the last um, event of the week was that prayer kind of vigil, and it was really a special, powerful time, and so we're going to go back into the prayer room from 6 to 7, both worship and prayers this evening. I encourage you to do that. Also, we've got some clipboards that I'd love to just pass by you. Sometimes it's easier when it's right there in front of you. And uh, on your way out, you're trying to talk to people or get to the car. So this is the new members class that is coming up in just a couple of weeks. And we'd like to invite you to learn more about our church. And it's simply that, just giving you information, giving you some things to think about, as well as the uh, opportunity to, uh, to sign a card at the end of that, should that be what you would love to do or like to do and uh, join the church. So I'd encourage you to do that. That's the 19th is when that starts. Amen. All right, take your Bibles. Let's go to Matthew, all right? Matthew is where we are at. We've been in Matthew for a couple of weeks. We are continuing in this uh, journey as we continue to sit at the feet of Jesus as he's teaching both the disciples as well as, remember, the crowd that is there, the crowd that is assembled. He really focuses on his disciples because he is, he is unleashing the beauty of the new kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, and um, really it's, it's, it's how to live, how to serve, how to react in uh, ways of the kingdom of heaven. And it totally is in contrast to that of the world. It's just, it's just against what the world uh, is thinking is priority and is first place. And Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he's focusing, I want you to, I want you to hear this, about all of these disciples, he's focusing on the heart. He wants the heart on the inside, the inner nature, to really, to really be, uh, to be molded and to be groomed and to, uh, to really reflect uh, the King and the Kingdom of Heaven. And so, as we look at each of these, again, each one of them is unique. Each one of them is, is, is purposeful. And as we go through them, we really are hearing from our Master about what's important and how that we need to cling to those things, even if the world shuns them and thinks that they're silly, or could we even say stupid. That's what the world would see. But Jesus wants us to, uh, to gravitate to them. He wants us to lean in and listen to what He has for us as uh, we're his followers. And so we've looked at already two of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, number one. Last week we looked at blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And today we're going to look at the third one. We can all read it together. It's very short. And we're saying, what are we going to get out of this? Well, I want you to listen to what we're going to, uh, to glean from this third beatitude. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you for uh, just putting each of these beatitudes together. And as you spoke them on the mountainside there, outside of Capernaum, on the Sea of Galilee, Lord, I... I thank you that today we're in a setting here in O'Fallon Assembly of God, and Lord, we want to listen to you. We want to hear what you have to say about what's going on on the inside, our inner man, and how that can then transform the outside, the exterior of our life, and truly make a difference. And so, Lord, just have your way in these next few moments, and Lord, just speak to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, and let us, Lord, live it out. We ask these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this third one, Jesus is shaking things up because 
again, they're expecting, the crowd that is, is expecting this leader to arise and to be somewhat of that political, you know, strong arm. They're, they're looking for someone to push the Romans around and that they're wanting to have uh, this political leader. But Jesus comes and he's establishing this new kingdom. He's establishing this new lifestyle, this new this new way to, to walk and, and live. And he's focusing once again on the inside. This message, again, is going to rile up those in the crowd. But at the same time, it's going to put a hook in their jaw. As it kind of it makes them think they're not going to get away from the power of Jesus' words because what he says is truth and what he says is authority. And so they, they, they want to listen to what Jesus has to say. The bloodthirsty and the revenge seeking, you know what? They don't receive it here on this earth, this inheritance of the earth. Jesus said, blessed are the meek for they the meek will inherit the earth. Not, again, the bloodthirsty, the assertive, those that are pushing their way forward. Everything he's sharing runs counter to the culture of the day. Its standards, its values. When Jesus says, you want to be great? Yes! A lot of people think they want to be great. And then he kind of flips it on its uh, end and says, to be great, you must become the least or you must become what? A servant. As he shared that in Matthew 23, 11. But Jesus today is saying, blessed are the meek. Not the weak. Blessed are the meek. Not those that, uh, again, are arrogant and pushing themselves out as far as into the leadership rule. Pharisees taught something different. They, they even emphasize those spiritual leaders, Pharisees, scribes, and others. They, they kind of focused on that righteousness was an external thing, something seen, something you could kind of witness. It was a matter of obeying regulations. It was a matter of following rules. They shared that righteousness could be measured by praying and how you prayed and kind of get attention out in public or how you fasted and how people saw that you fasted because, well, you, you grimaced in pain and you made it known that you were fasting or giving. See how much I give or honoring the Sabbath. Any of those things, they were focusing on the externals of righteousness. But Jesus, in this message on the Sermon on the Mount, He said it's going to be something else that I want you to listen to. And again, you have to hear it from my lips as well as see it from my life. It is these things that are on the inside. He calls for us to be different. Turn to your neighbor and says, you and I are to be different. Go ahead and look him in the eye and says, we're different, all right? We, we don't look the same as, as everybody else. We are different. Some of you getting carried away. I didn't say, look at him and say, you're strange, all right? You're peculiar. The Bible could say peculiar, but, but we're different. We really are. When, when, when the world tries to just uh, agitate, get their way, and, and, and they push and they try to be domineering and their attitude is, is stiff and it's harsh. Uh, the attitude of the Christian, again, is different. It's different. Blessed are the meek. Meek is, there's power in meekness. There's power in words that are softened by the Holy Spirit. I recall many, many times of dealing with whether it was a contractor, whether it was a subcontractor, and 
I remember, Russ, you and I, as we uh, sat together sometimes in these meetings, that they would push and they would try to be domineering with uh, their angle and their viewpoint. And I thank God for gentleness. Sometimes if I didn't have enough, I looked over and, and Russ was demonstrating meekness or demonstrating a controlled spirit. And I tried to follow suit. Sometimes he might have been a little bit more agitated, and 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 the, the quietness of that meek spirit would would try to flow in and through. And and that's what we need to have because all of us are going to be pushed. All right, your buttons will be pushed at some way, shape, or form. Your buttons get pushed, and and the Lord doesn't want us to to go to anger. The Lord doesn't want us to go to retaliation. The Lord doesn't want us to choose violence. The Lord wants us to live out meekness. This is, again, a part of His kingdom. He wants us to see things from God's perspective. He wants us to relate to people in a supernatural way. It's not something natural for us to do. It is supernatural as we live it out supernaturally through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now the Pharisees, once again, they're, they're concerned, concerned and consumed with minute details of conduct, how to act, how to look in front of the crowd and the people. But they were neglecting the weightier issues of character. Two things. you got conduct and character. Let me make a statement. Hopefully you can jot it down. Never forget, conduct flows out of character. Remember, on the inside, God is building us into people of character. And then out of character is that transformed life that flows out in how that we live, our behavior, and our conduct as disciples of Jesus. So let's look at this word meek or meekness. Several things that I believe the Lord wants us to just uh, grab today and accept today about what meekness is. Some of the truths that can define it. Because again, it's a small verse. Sometimes you just kind of whip through each one of them and we need to stop and ponder. First thing is this. Meekness flows from the heart of Christ. Meekness and what it is, it flows from the heart of our Savior and Lord as we looked at the Scripture in communion today like a lamb that was led to slaughter and how that he acted and, and how that he was softened with, with meekness to follow the Father's will. Gentleness is literally what meekness is. If you want to say, well, what is meekness? It's gentleness, it's humbleness or humility, and it is that of being lowly or placing yourself down, not putting yourself up, but placing yourself down so that he could be lifted up and exalted. The example of Jesus in Matthew 11, jot this verse down, verse 28, 9, and 30 says, Come, this is the Lord speaking, come to me and I will give you rest. All of you who work so hard beneath a heavy yoke, wear my yoke, he says, for it fits perfectly. And let me teach you for I am gentle and humble, or I am meek and lowly. It's, it's, it's who I am. It's, it's, it's my, my character and attribute of my life. And you shall find rest for your souls, for I give you only light burdens. The meek are those that are gentle. They don't advance and assert themselves and they don't domineer a schedule or a plan of events to go ahead and benefit them. They don't push themselves out there. But the Lord says that they're going to inherit the earth. Why? Because they trust in God and they trust in the plan of God. Blessed are the meek. Opposite of meekness, let's look at it. What is the antonym of that? It's those that are forceful and haughty. Those that are pushy 
and aggressive. Blessed are, he didn't say those that push themselves out to get seen and known. And if you want to get anything done, just stand up and just push your way. No, blessed are the meek. Blessed are those that are gentle. Blessed are those that are humble. Now, for the world to grab this and for the world to even understand it, it's difficult. Do you know what the world equates meekness with? Weakness. People in our world would see people that are meek and thinking that it's somewhat soft or spineless or or timid because they don't stand up and they kind of are chill through maybe difficult spots. They equate meekness with weakness. But how many knows Jesus was not weak? Jesus was strong. He went to the cross. He endured the scorn, the shame, and he faced all of that in the meekness as a lamb that would go to the slaughter. It defines who the disciples really is. It defines the heart of God. It defines the heart of our Savior. And we can also see in Galatians 5, it parallels one of the fruit of the Spirit. How many knows what that is? The fruit of gentleness. So you've got meekness, and then you've got gentleness on either side leading us. Remember, we can't accomplish this in our own strength. It is that supernatural ability of Christ that lives with inside of us. Here's another scripture that was prophesied about the coming of Christ, and it was spoken by Zechariah in Zechariah 9.9. 9. Listen to what it says. Say to the daughter of Zion, see, your king comes to you. How does he come? This king comes to you gentle and riding on, what does he ride on? He rides on a donkey, not uh, some large Arabian steed. Uh, He rides on something that is what would be seen as lowly. Something that would be seen as, well, that's really not what you're supposed to ride in on. He rides on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It is the spirit of meekness, the spirit of gentleness, the spirit of Christ that shapes the inhabitants of the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, not the cocky. Blessed are the meek, not those that are bold and assertive, but blessed are those that are gentle and humble in spirit and that will follow Christ and His example. Times turning the other cheek. That's the spirit of meekness. I know inside you'd want to just kind of rile up and sometimes you'd like to have a holy slap. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? You'd love to just have, this is a slap, but it's holy. You'll just try to make it righteous. And it's just like, what is going on? Wake up and you just want to kind of go back at somebody. And, and whoa, wait a second. No, that's, that's riling up. There's, there's retaliation. There is the spirit of getting back or getting ahead or getting one up. And that is not what Christ wants for all of us as His followers. He endured crucifixion on the cross. He endured all of that. He is our gentle Savior. There's a couple of verses that I want you to write down, but also listen to people of God, men of God, even women of God. Listen to this. Colossians 3, 12. New King James says it like this. Therefore... As the elect of God, or as those chosen by God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. You see, meekness is one of the clothes of the believer that we put on. We, We don't put on the air of what the world would think is right. We put on the spirit, and we work within our inner man these qualities of which meekness is one. 1 Timothy 6, 11 also says, But thou, O man of God, women, you're in there too, flee these things and follow or pursue. What are we going to pursue? 
We're going to follow after righteousness and godliness and faith, love, patience, and meekness. You follow after it because the spirit of meekness will trump a stream of, of rushing anger and antagonism and, and, and all of those things. Meekness is like the quiet strength that can diffuse all of those maddening things. It's the preferred clothing for the righteous man or woman of God. Meekness is a Christian grace honored by God, but then it's scorned by our evil world. They scorn at it, but the Lord honors it, and we want to live it out. It flows from the heart of Christ. Something else about meekness you're going to find in James chapter 1. We're in the book of James on Wednesday night. We've already looked at this. So everybody open up your Bibles to James 1, 19 to 21. And you're going to find something also about meekness, that this meekness has the spirit of being teachable. Or there's teachability connected to it. And so James writes there in that first... uh, First chapter, beginning at verse number 19, it says this. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Not quick to wrath, slow to wrath. Let meekness, let meekness have its work. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And here's the key. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Let me say it again. Receive with what? Meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. We find the beauty of how to receive the word. It's with meekness. The spirit of meekness. To receive it means that we don't have a defiant, resistant, and hostile spirit when we are being taught and shared the Word of God. And even an arrogance saying, you know what, I, I, I know better. I, I know a little bit more. I, I've been around the block a few times, and even some older Christians could be caught in this. In their maturity, they stand up and they don't think that they need to hear or have with meekness more of the implanted Word of God that He wants to sow into the heart and life. The spirit of meekness humbly receives, warmly accepts the living Word of God. Even if it, even if it kind of pierces, even if it somewhat cuts, we humbly accept and we do so with meekness because The Word of God is life-changing. It means that we are teachable. But it doesn't mean that we're gullible. All right, doesn't mean that we're gullible. doesn't mean that we'll never get angry about what people say, do, or possibly even teach. No, verse 19 says that we should be slow to anger, but it doesn't say that we should not experience anger this anger. It's being slow. Spirit of meekness helps us to do that. It lets us kind of be softened in our approach. So back to Jesus, our example, all right? Mark chapter 3, verse 5. We hear, and the word will say, he became angry. He became grieved at the hard-heartedness, maybe even the hard-headedness of the Pharisees. He became angry or grieved that they were stubborn and resistant to what the Word of God was leading them in. And you all remember the example of Jesus driving out the merchants, remember? As they were all there turning over the tables in Matthew 21. doesn't mean that we just lie low. It means that it is a spirit that is under control. It means that we're ready to listen and learn. It means that we're teachable and we're going to receive the spirit of the Word of God. And we're going to do so with openness. Meekness is clearly the spirit of teachability. And with meekness, 
disciples love to learn more of what Jesus is saying to them. That's the second thought about weakness. Now here's another one that as you look at it and see the connection about meekness and trusting in God. Meekness places one's complete trust in God. It's where we need to be. It's where we need to have that start. It tells God that, you know what? I, I, I believe in you and in your, your timetable. And even though in my physical flesh, I'm a little frustrated. All right? We, we, we get frustrated from time to time about timetable. We get frustrated about how things have worked out or how people have responded or what has taken place. But meekness, think about it. Meekness then allows us to place all of our trust completely into God. We roll those anxieties. We roll those relationships. We roll everything of job and health. And then with meekness, we wait patiently for the Lord. We just wait on God because God has a plan. God has a purpose. And as we wait on Him, we need the spirit of meekness. Blessed are the meek. The Lord says you're going to inherit the earth. We'll be thankful in the meantime for all that God has given to us. What He's given to us in the past, what He's given to us now, what He will give to us in the future. Those world are always clamoring for what? More. Never satisfied with what they have. They're always looking over the fence and seeing somebody has something else. And they always want more. They want what somebody else has. But the child of God with meekness is filled with thanksgiving and gratitude for what God has given to me. And because God has blessed me, I will just honor Him and serve Him and rejoice in all that God has done. We're content. I believe meekness leads and connects to that of contentment. Listen to how David put it in Psalms 37.7. With meekness, we can rest in the will of God. Whatever's going on, there's a sense of arrest. There's a sense of a calmness. There's a sense of putting it in God's control. Listen to what David said. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. The one that is receiving the blessedness of the Lord through meekness is the one who will then rest on God and wait patiently for Him. Meekness yields and submits to the sovereign will of God. It doesn't push your way. It doesn't push your agenda. It just, it just leads into the sovereign will of God. How many knows Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Turn to your neighbor and say, I know that verse. I know that verse. I've got it up in my house. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Why don't you say it with me, all right? I believe all of us can do it together. Let's say it together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge Him and He will. He shall direct thy paths. We trust Him in all of our ways. We look to Him. We don't lean on our own understanding because that could get us into trouble. We have to, with the spirit of meekness, rest patiently and rest sometimes quietly and sometimes a little bit longer than we thought we would, but we know that God's got it under control. A.W. Tozier, he uh, shared this that I liked and I want you to listen to it. He said, being meek means a person has stopped being fooled about himself. He has accepted God's estimate of his own life. He knows he is as weak and helpless as God declared him to be. But paradoxically, he knows at the same time that he is in the sight of God of more importance than angels. In himself, nothing. But in God, everything. In Himself, nothing. 
but in God everything. Meekness places one's trust in the Lord and with that meekness will rest in how God will carry it out to completion. This last thought about meekness, I think somebody needs to hear today for whatever circumstance that might be trying, difficult and tough. I believe meekness will show joy in any and all circumstances. The character of meekness points to the quality of an overflowing joy that is available in even the worst of times. In the most difficult of experiences, meekness leads and points to joy. No matter how desperate they get, a meek person finds themselves in knowing that the Father has a plan. The Father has a beautiful plan and a purpose for their life. We don't let those exterior things all right, govern what happens on the inside. We can't. We can't let the exterior take away our joy. With our being settled with meekness, we find that there is joy in difficult times, painful tribulations, glorious moments, trying circumstances. The Bible says, and we know, everybody say, we know. We know that all things that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into His plans. Romans 8, 28 from the Living Bible. We know, we know there is joy in knowing that whatever we're going through can't rob the spirit of life and joy from us. John Piper in a book wrote this, and I want to share his capsule to comment. One of them really grabbed me. Meekness refrains from revenge and defensiveness. Meekness loves to give place to wrath and leave its vindication with God. Here's the next one. I want you to listen to this. Meekness is the power to absorb adversity and criticism without lashing back. It's the ability to absorb kind of that fiery moment and uh, without lashing back there is that gentleness and there is that meekness in the heart. But I also believe that the last part of the verse we can't ignore because that is also the joy of a reward. He wants us to know that if we're meek and we live it out in our inner life and in all of the tough, difficult moments, he says, I want you to know there is a joyful reward. He gives that to them so that they can endure persecution with joy. They can go through that and understand that there's joy in the midst, sometimes of poverty or pain or sickness. In 2 Corinthians 8, 2, I, I see a verse that might look like it, 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 it doesn't connect, but I want you to see two words that kind of flow together. 2 Corinthians 8, 2 says this, Though they have been going through much trouble in hard times, they have mixed their wonderful joy with their deep poverty. Isn't that amazing? They've mixed uh, some things that shouldn't go together in the minds of those that don't fully understand, but they've mixed their wonderful joy with their deep poverty, and the result has been an overflow of giving to others. It's that spirit, that life, that gentleness, that meekness uh, that gives joy in tough times because God's in control. All things work together for good. The Lord in His spirit of meekness and His attitude of joy. Look at 1 Peter 2, 21 to 23. Musicians, if you quickly come, I'm going to wrap up real quick. 1 Peter 2, 21 to 23. Listen to this about Jesus, our Savior. This suffering is all part of the work God has given you. Christ, who suffered for you, is your example. Follow in His steps. He never sinned, never told a lie, never answered back when insulted. When he suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God, listen to this, who always judges fairly. 
Jesus could have had right to go ahead and not move with the spirit of meekness, but he didn't retaliate. He didn't answer back when insulted. He never sinned, never told a lie. Why? He trusted in God. He let joy rule. He let meekness reign. And he lived out the qualities of the kingdom life. Blessed are the meek, for they, for they, for they will inherit the earth. It's not the charismatic, domineering leaders that inherit the earth. It's the meek. I want you to see that, child of God. Meekness will inherit the earth with eyes that are closed, with with a spirit that is receptive to receiving the truths of the kingdom of God. Do you hear God speaking and whispering this beatitude to you today? If so, follow after the ones, the one who gives life, speaks blessing and reward. Could I ask you a question? What path are you on today? The one that tries to honor external righteousness or are you on the path where you're trying to honor Jesus Christ and the words that He speaks and live out each individual beatitude? You see, He wants to transform you from the inside out. Let Him forgive you. Let Him cleanse you. Let Him wash away. Let Him let him purge those worldly thoughts and things and give you a new heart and a new life. Kingdom people act differently. Kingdom people see it differently. And if you're struggling with that right now, then I question what has happened on the inside of your heart. Do you need to let Jesus Christ today wash you with His precious blood and you give Him that chance to make you whole? It's called being born again. You can't do it on your own. Jesus is the one. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So with your heads bowed in His presence, just slip up a hand and say, Pastor, the Lord is calling me today out of the world and out of its uh, crazy ways to to accept Jesus and His loving path for my life. I accept Him, I believe Him, and I will trust Him. Lift up a hand. Wherever you are, I need Jesus. I want Jesus. I want Him in my life. I want Him in my heart. Hallelujah. Place your hands on your heart. Believers, let's pray. Before we sing this last song, for some this might be a little difficult. Be attitude. Maybe you begin to think a little differently after hearing the message than what you did when you came in. You thought meekness was kind of silly. Meekness was was just kind of off. Jesus elevated meekness to a whole new level. He wants us to be gentle, humble, and lowly. Place your hands on your heart, Father. I'm just asking now that that you would work on us, work on me, work on my spirit, my inner man. You told me to flee from unrighteousness. You told me to flee from evil and pursue meekness. God, today, this is what we ask. Help us to pursue meekness in our life. When things agitate us, when things get us mad, help us to remember Jesus like a lamb being led to slaughter. He did not open his mouth. He did not fight for his life. He willingly surrendered himself to Almighty God. Lord, help us to surrender everything we have to your will. Give us meekness in our life, for there's a blessing that is attached to it, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me all over this place? Let's worship the Lord. Let's sing a simple song as they're going to lead us in. Surrender your will to Jesus.
remain open as they continue in just a moment to sing that. Some of you just want to come and say, Lord, this has been one of those that was really difficult for me. And I need your meekness. I need your gentleness. I need your humility in my life. Just spend time and just let the Lord work in and through your inner man. Give that space this morning. I also want to speak to those that are watching today. It's reminded as I got an email from someone that's watching in a different state every other week and said that that message really spoke to him. And so for those of you that are watching today, the Lord loves you. The Lord has a plan for your life and the Lord wants meekness to well up with inside of you as well. Live it out wherever you are. Demonstrate that your spirit is under control by God Almighty. God loves you, cares for you, has an awesome plan. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Would you continue just to sing that? God bless you if you got to go. There's a meeting for those with kids, church workers. Some of you just spend some time quietly before the Lord.